Hi, and welcome to the Daily Market Commentary with me, Jan Mota, Chief Market Analyst for Tio Markets. And today I'd like to remind you that we do not provide investment advice. So the views expressed here in this presentation are only our opinions and are made available purely for educational and marketing purposes. So they do not constitute as investment advice and you should pause this video, read through the disclaimer and only proceed with this video if you agree with our disclaimer. And before we go through the market news today, let me go and see what the charts are telling us today. Here we have S&P 500 on weekly time frame. And as you remember, we have been talking about the institutional selling come into this market. And it was up here that the market has been since moving lower. It has clearly broken the uptrend line. So we have reasons to believe the weakness will continue. And with today's uh, news about the banks laundering criminal money in the, the big banks in the world laundering criminal money, this is not really a situation where the markets would like to be on, or the, or the market participants rather would be ready to buy the, the stocks higher. So we have recent support breaking here and we have the rising trend line support broken as well. So it makes sense to see where the next support levels might be. So I don't I wouldn't be surprised to see S&P 500 moving down to the 3192 level and who knows maybe later we'll see uh, moves lower because now we have a resistance area above here and so it's kind of likely that the market will move down. In the four hour time frame, we have market making lower highs and breaking the supports. So we clearly have a downtrend. Also, if we see what the market is doing, we can see that it's basically fairly close to the lower end of this price channel, the lower uh, or the sort of bearish price channel. So you have the moving averages pointing lower, you have the market making lower highs, market breaking supports, but it obviously means that there might be some rallies higher. So if the market rallies a bit, these are potential resistance areas here. So basically this area here, the sideways movement is a likely resistance area. And we have this low here from the 18th of September. So worth paying attention to these levels. And if the market rallies further than that, then we have, let's see, we have this low here as well. So a bit of an area here, market potentially finding resistance there. So let's see how it reacts to it if it rallies back to that level. And this is what the European stocks have been doing. This is the DAX futures for DAX index from Germany. And it is highly correlated with S&P 500 and NASDAQ. And now that we have negative news in the market, lack of US uh, fiscal stimulus, we have a lack of uh, um, development in coronavirus vaccine situation. And we have these negative news that uh, bring down the stocks in banks and stock markets are vulnerable to this sort of news in general. So obviously I'm referring to these document leaks that have been uh, exposing some um, basically banks not being very active on clamping down criminal activities uh, when they move their ill-gotten gains around the world. So this is DAX futures. It has broken out of the rising channel and it is now trading outside of this channel. So using this channel width as a sort of a rough guide on how far this market might move, it points roughly to this um, 12,200 level where we have a previous low and there's another low down here from June 25th. So let's see if this market keeps on rolling over, keeps on making lower uh, lower uh, highs when it uh, every now and then rallies. Obviously no market moves in one direct line. Very rarely that happens and markets rally every now and then even if they are in downtrend. 
So this market has broken outside of the rising channel uh, support and is now moving lower. If there are rallies, we would be looking at potential resistance areas. And I can see this area here, uh, previous support now likely resistance. Obviously, we don't know before the market moves there how the price is actually going to react to these levels. But this coincides with the channel low. So let's see if the price rallies, if it starts to roll over and then we look for uh, shorting opportunities. And this is Euro USD, as you can see in weekly time frame, the market has rejected this key level that we have been talking about 1754 quite often. And now we have market retracing back because of lack of risk sentiment in the market. But let's see what the, the uh, daily picture looks like. Um, on Friday, we were talking about this uh, bullish candle here and how the market after that was in this resistance here. And I suggested at the time that market might roll over and actually create a higher. Oh, sorry. I said, I think that we should look for uh, signs of buying down here. Now we are approaching the 50 day moving average again. So very important re uh, region and I can see that if I go to the four hour chart uh, we have a bit of buying coming in so if the market now creates a higher low that's obviously a good sign for us and then we need to see market pushing through those levels otherwise the bull market in euro USD is losing steam very quickly about uh, pound USD when the market was trading down here I said in I think it was yes yeah, September 11th you can go and check this video if you like I was saying that if the market rallies to this level it's kind of likely that it doesn't uh, go beyond that because it's a, an important uh, resistance level it used to be an important support and now it's likely to be an in important resistance and this is exactly what happened then the market rolled over if we now look for so obviously this is a lower high so if that sort of indicates that there'll be pressure against this low the, the bulls here might not be that committed to this market anymore so we might see the market going deeper and maybe into this zone where we have rising trend line support and we have a recent um, sort of 12, 14th of July high that might act now as a support. This is also a 38.2 Fibonacci retracement area so it makes sense to stay focused on price action down here at the moment the market is rolling over and it's kind of uh, resting at these levels but we need to follow price action in lower time frames and see it doesn't look very convincing here at the moment and if this starts to roll over now then it's likely to go to the next support area so very good market to stay uh, very focused on we have good swings in this market so it's a good market to trade last week we were focusing on Aussie yen and saying that we had some buying indications here now I was saying also at the time that I would be looking for long signals if the there was evidence of market uh, honoring those supports maybe creating lower highs uh, sorry lower lows but those never actually came so there was the market violated the support and kept on going lower if you come to my webinars i show you how to you how to really understand what's happening with the price action in multiple time frames and then you'll be better prepared on on uh, trading these setups and maybe even turning around and finding opportunities on the other side USD CAD is still playing out the sort of plan that we laid on this for this market earlier here when it was trading up here I was suggesting that it would probably trade down to the support and then bounce higher from the support again so this is exactly what has been happening with this market so the obvious question now is what next so 
Now that we have created a higher low, then it's obviously more likely that this high will be taken out and the market is probably moving higher. So if we take the width, width of this range and make a projection based on this width, we can say that, okay, maybe we have a move to the next resistance level, which is this high here. So let's see how this plays out. Obviously, we don't know the future, but we can always follow the price action in all different time frames. If you don't know how to do that, come to my webinars and I will show you how to do that. And USD Yen, this is for our time frame, is moving down in a trend channel. It's bouncing against the 10 period moving average but now it's at very important level if we take and see the daily time frame we can see that we have this low here so follow this market now see what what it does is it going to stay below this is it going to keep on creating lower highs or is it going to start moving higher these key levels are highly important so let's follow this market very closely now and see which direction it is going to take. This is a potential turning point, although at the moment it is still moving lower in a downtrend. And news wise, the focus is very much on stock markets at the, at the moment as the bank stocks are dragging the stock markets lower. We have obviously the FinCEN files there, the huge revelations on what the banks do when they see criminal activity or when they suspect criminal activity. And most of the time, according to these reports, the answer is they do nothing. And this obviously is going to mean that there will be uh, lots of interest from the authorities into the banks in the future. And this will make, mean court cases. This will mean management will have to go in some of the banks and there will be indictions. There will be a uh, jail term. Um, there'll be fines, etc. ahead. So a lot of insecurity that or insecurity that the markets really don't like to see. So if we combine this with the situation where we have valuations quite high, the markets are waiting for coronavirus uh, vaccination and there is new wave, second wave of uh, infections going on in Europe. This is kind of tricky time for stocks and it's difficult to see many reasons why to buy stocks at the moment. There's also uncertainty on whether the US authorities will arrange new economic stimulus anytime soon and the US elections are also a risk factor. In terms of macroeconomic data today and tomorrow, we have lots of central bank bosses speaking. The Fed Chair Powell speaks today and testifies tomorrow. And we have BOE Governor Bailey speaking and the UK public sector borrowing numbers coming out as well. So as usual, trade safe and never trade without stops and keep your position sizes reasonable so that you can sustain the losses while you wait for the winning trade opportunities and come to the webinars, share this URL and give us thumbs up if you like what we offer. Thank you so much and I look forward to see you soon.